Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Kiki Sparkle. Hello. Uh, Mattel is not being swell. Well, Mattel's lawyers. Yes, the lawyers. Are not being swell. We're going to talk about a uh, DMCA takedown, copyright strike on YouTube channels that are covering the Jurassic World toys, new Jurassic mm -hmm. World uh, Dominion toys. And uh, Mattel is getting a, a PR black eye from yes. this. Uh, the reason we're covering it is because we have had a run-in with Mattel's lawyers ourselves. Yes, we have. Uh, in fact, back in the day, another blog that uh, is no longer active now, but you were doing a lot of uh, like Monster High doll reviews and stuff like that. And you had posted some pics of, uh, early pics of upcoming Monster High dolls and Mattel's lawyers contacted our ISP. They didn't talk to us. They did not contact and us. And I didn't even host them on my site. They no. were linked from another site, so I wasn't even hosting them there. So they contacted our ISP and attempted to get our website taken down. Um, actually, our ISP took down that article with those pictures mm -hmm. in, but because of that, because it was abuse of uh, DMCA, uh, we actually moved all of our websites to offshore hosting mm -hmm. where they could not do that. I think at the time, our server was in Chicago, so it was under DMCA, you know. Uh, but Mattel's lawyers have been abusing copyright for years. Uh, we're gonna talk about this because we're seeing more and more of this happen, especially on YouTube. Uh, more companies hiring lawyers that are, you know, false flagging, false striking. We've talked about it with, you know, anime, we know with music, uh, you know, fair use. And again, to bring it back to Mattel. Uh, you know, we covered the uh, Shira, the DreamWorks Shira trailer. Mm -hmm. We reacted to a very, very few. It was few well clips. within fair use. It was well within fair use, and uh, we got we got a strike for that. Yeah, that lasted only as long as uh, their event they were at was, and then they released the, the copyright strike. Uh, joke was on them because we just redid it again and made sure that we even we're, took even more precautions and put it right back up. But the original video was immediately uh, deemed fair use as soon as it was reviewed because it was fair use. Yeah, and what these companies are doing basically to justify their existence, whether it's Mattel's lawyers or like Warner Chappelle Music or whatever. You saw it with that Riot Games, they went and Riot that, that Games, one Arcane, artist, yeah. they, were, they went and copyright struck her own art because it had the word Arcane in her comic name, which you don't own the word Arcane. That's not how copyright works. Yeah, so what they're doing is they are are basically trying to justify their existence to their corporate overlords and being like, look, we caught all these channels, you know, infringing on your copyright. And I'm like, I'm sorry, taking, you know, a, or showing a photograph of somebody that maybe got a toy early is not copyright no. And the, the thing is about this stuff too, um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the, the person that, that got struck, they even said they made sure they did not use copyrighted stuff because of it. But yeah. beyond that, it's like these companies go and they claim this stuff and they, and then they claim it like with, with Teespring or with YouTube and no one's actually checking it just because the company's lawyer said so it must be true. But we're finding out more, uh, very often that is not the case. They're just striking it because they think they can. And it's, it's absolute bullshit because not everything, I mean, some Sometimes it's, it's legit, but a lot of it, it's not. And then these people get punished. And like in one case, the guy was going to lose his whole channel yeah. over, you know, false flagging. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk about this. I got to give a hat tip to Squidgy Throne who, who sent me the link. And I, I'm wondering if they sent us the link because we have talked about in the past mm -hmm. Mattel doing this. Now, I don't Well, they're lawyers doing it. They're lawyers. I'm that, not going to blame Mattel specifically. That's what I want to address because this has been going on for a long time. Uh, I don't think it's it's individuals at Mattel. I think they basically fire and forget. I think they're hiring a law firm to go out and do this. But this is very par for the course. Again, we had to move all of our websites to a different host because of the Mattel situation. Because mm -hmm. we're like, well, if if Mattel's lawyers are threatening us, and again, this is something that wouldn't even hold They water. tried to take down the whole site. They tried to take down our whole site. Over yes. images that weren't even hosted on our no. site. And, and, then, and it was something we didn't even violate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're they're known for doing this, but uh, it does seem like, you know, these things come in waves. Again, we're seeing a lot of companies right now striking people. It seems like to me it's like a power trip. Like, yeah. they could just say, okay, we're taking this one thing down. and But they don't. Like, in our case, they try to take the entire the entire uh, website down. And in this yeah. guy's case, they kept striking it, trying to take the entire channel down. Yeah. It's not like they're just trying to, like, you know, okay, well, you shouldn't be having that up there. Can you please remove it? It's like they're just trying to literally destroy anyone who they think might potentially 
be an issue. And it's like, they're talking about livelihoods they're messing with now over some, and then the next thing is, if people are excited about your upcoming damn projects, wouldn't you want the publicity? Wouldn't you want people to be excited to go buy your shit? Because now at this point, all it's doing is making people be like, well, I'm not buying from you. Yeah, right now, Mattel definitely needs to win fans back. A lot of people jaded about She-Ra. A lot of people upset about Masters of the Universe Revelation. When you've got people out there actively promoting your products for free, you would think you would uh, uh, handle them a little bit differently. But we're going to talk about that because mm -hmm. that's the, the, that is not the way these companies think. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 258,000 subs. Yay! Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about pop culture. We talk about Mattel. We talk about retro toys. We've talked a lot on the channel about He-Man and She-Ra because we are big fans of He-Man and She-Ra. And uh, again, to reiterate, we have had run-ins with Mattel's lawyers. I think we mentioned it offhandedly in the live stream one time. It was years ago, mm -hmm. but it seems like they're still up to the same tricks. Same tricks. So this is coming from Boing Boing. Uh, they have an, a version of it out here on Reclaim the Net. Now, I believe this, this user, uh, Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, he got his channel back, but not without a lot of hassle. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yeah. So he got copyright strikes. Now, he has a video out there. Um, I'll put a link to the Boing Boing article. You can go out and watch his video. I don't want to snipe his video. But they basically went through his channel, looked for any images of these toys, and then you well, know, abused copyright. Yeah. According to him, he said what he had up, he made sure that he didn't put anything up with the watermarks or anything that could have got him in trouble. He went, he went and put pictures up from people who actually had the toys in hand. Now, granted, they are being bought in places like China. Well, my next thing is, Mattel, if you don't want people to buy this stuff and get it out early because you might have a deal with the, the IP holder that you aren't supposed to leak information from the upcoming movies, mm -hmm. then maybe not release it even in other countries as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe hold on to it if you're going to go after people for having pictures of it because it's the internet. You can get pictures from other countries. That's how the internet works. So apparently this person put up pictures of things that people actually had purchased the toy and had it. Yeah. And that was enough. Um, and he believed there was something that was copyright infringing. And they gave him a one strike. Yeah. And he took it down. And he took down all the other videos he could think of that were associated with it just in case so there wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. yeah and then come enough. Monday... They copyright struck him on videos that were no longer pu uh, up at all. They were, they were private. They weren't even public. Yeah, that is that is a huge problem right now that a lot of YouTubers are having. And I think I think they're trying to change that. But like people, you know, private live streams uh, and, and they're still getting copyright strikes for hidden live streams mm -hmm. from like two, three years ago. How could they even do that? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's it's crazy, especially since the purpose of his channel is to get people excited about these toys, to go buy these toys. You're, Mattel, you're getting free advertising. You're getting free advertising. And your lawyers were out there shutting these channels mm -hmm. down. And not in just like one strike. They were deliberately trying to take the entire channel destroy down. Destroy his channel. Like they did with us. They tried to take the entire website down over a couple images that weren't even hosted on the website. Uh, because you're mad about one article. So it's, 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 it's beyond, it's, it's beyond, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like it's just cruel at this point. Yeah. So there were some other YouTubers that jumped into this. This was about a week ago. Now, now he has had his channel reinstated. I don't think he's got I, much I believe on. they said, I don't know. I mean, that's what the one person yeah. said. Uh, let's see. Uh, Laura Legends had a video on it. Uh, Retro Blasting. I watched part of their. They said they got it back. Yeah. Um, I watched part of their video and, and they were like, oh, we were going back and forth with Mattel's lawyers in the comments. We mm -hmm. think um, that they're being ridiculous. And like I said, guys, I mean, they have a history of doing this. Uh, the only two companies I can think of, and I mean, we dunk on Disney constantly. Disney is like, it's not worth our time. But like, we've had problems with Mattel. We've had problems with Lego. Uh, we have problems, problems with Lego. DreamWorks, which is... DreamWorks, you know, which I think it might actually be the same. Who knows? Because it was a, a, a Mattel-related, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, project. It might be the same law firm. But whichever law firm this is... Mattel, you need to seriously look at what they're doing because they're actually causing you problems, mm -hmm. major problems with the fandom. And it will get to the point where YouTubers are not going to promote your stuff for free. Their entire YouTube channel is dedicated to like He-Man reviews and toy reviews. And If somebody has a picture up of like Legos or something and there was like a leaked information in the Legos, you know, it's not, we're well, going to go copyright strike every channel that talks about it because it shouldn't have been leaked in the first place. That's on you. So you're trying to put a cap back on, you put the pine genie back in the bottle, it's out there. So that's what they're doing. It's like something gets leaked, people talk about it, they're trying to put it back in because they're afraid they're going to get in trouble with the IP holder. The thing is, that's on you, not on everybody, on everybody else. 
Yeah, so this is, um, I, apparently there were more people involved than just uh, Yeah, Andy's. I think there was more than just the one. Yeah, so this is coming from Reclaim the Net. Mattel hits multiple Jurassic World toy reviewers with copyright takedown. Not this a good look. Not a good look. Uh, the takedowns were issued on review of toys that re re the reviewers had purchased. Okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. The reviewers have purchased these toys. They purchased the toys at a store. So, I mean, if you are somebody who they hire to look at toys or to report on something, right? They give you a date, uh, embargo date, so you're allowed to talk about it. You see it with films, reviews all the time, things like that. So if you're actually one of their official people, you'll get an embargo date. If you are somebody who just found it in the toy shop and wanted to do a video on it, you have no fucking idea that there is an embargo date or when it is or whatever. If the, if the store sells it to you, um, then you have no idea. For all you know, okay, I'm, I, I was allowed to buy it, so it's on the shelf. Well, it could be it could be that uh, they're getting pressure, like, oh my god, those toys got released early. That's what's going on. They got IP holder. The, yeah, they're movie spoilers. That's what happened to us too. We we were contacted once by Lego, and it was over, I think, solo toys, and it spoiled. I, I'm trying to remember. I think it spoiled what the Millennium Falcon looked like or the Kessel Run, because they they hadn't yeah. announced yet that the Kessel Run was a thing. It was like a Kessel Run playset, but. These uh, images were out there. They were on fan blogs. They were all over the place. They were all over the place. And we actually didn't host them. I think I pushed back on them. I said, we're not hosting these images. We're linking them from someplace else. Take it up with them. But at this point, you know, again, like I, I said, because of Mattel's lawyers years ago, all of our websites are hosted offshore. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're immune to the uh, DMCA takedown request, the country that we're hosted in. You know, they, they can't do it. It's a lot harder. I mean, they can ask nicely. Well, usually if someone asks us nicely and gives us a good reason, we'll comply. It's just that they didn't even ask us. They didn't no. contact us at all. They just went over right, our heads. Right, right. Yeah, and tried to get our website taken And the down. same as this person. If they, they would ask these YouTube people, which like, would you, could you please take this down because it wasn't supposed to be out yet? Most of them are going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Majority of people are going to, and it would never have to go that far. But they're not even giving people the opportunity. They're just they're just copyright striking everyone. Yeah. Uh, because it, we're, we we represent Mattel, so we can. It's like it, you know you're abusing you're abusing the system. So yeah, it was Andy's dinosaur reviews best in slot and collect Jurassic after they reviewed or featured toys from Jurassic World Dominion again probably spoilers and uh, they were probably getting heat from Universal. Mm -hmm. Well, don't let your toys get out first. Yeah, I right. Mean, I know Walmart's really stickler for not releasing before the street dates. If something gets put on the shelf, you can't buy it. But other stores, no. Um, so they said that. They didn't feature any unreleased content and only featured either stock photos of basic figures that are already available uh, to purchase in China and were recently sold through online toy store ToyWiz. Unboxing and reviews of toys have been purchased from ToyWiz or website listings for upcoming figures. So this, they bought it legitimately. This is, you know, this is par for the course. Like I know, you know, I was big into collecting Transformers and, and people, you know, that were working at Target or Walmart would get the the list of upcoming figures. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, we're getting a new jazz. Well, they have jazz. pictures of it because they have the case or whatever. Yeah, we're getting a new jazz because look, he's in the assortment or something like that. And they would speculate and then eventually you'd see the pictures come out. And, and how it works is it gets everybody excited. Like, oh my God, I can't wait for that toy. Or yes. like they see the review and they're yes. like, I can't wait till that's out in stores. I want to buy it. When you do this kind of shit, people are going to be like, oh, I'm not buying your crap. You're, you're abusing your power and, and you know, you don't, you don't want uh, collectors to be excited about your stuff. Yeah, so Andy's dinosaur reviews initially hit with one copyright takedown, like you said, mm -hmm. and he took he took everything down that he thought could potentially he did, yeah. be. He took down every video yeah. on his channel that mentioned Jurassic World Dominion. It was related to Mattel. However, he was then hit with two additional copyright takedown notices, which resulted in his channel being given a total of three and scheduled for permanent deletion. This is Mattel. This is not a good look. No, it's like with our website. It wasn't yeah. like, could you take this one thing down? They tried to take the entire site down. It's, it's like you can go in with a scalpel or with a, you know, with a, a sledgehammer, and they're trying to smash anybody who would, is, has any interest in your stuff into a pulp. They're not just like nicely asking, hey, can you not can you take this down temporarily? No, they're trying to completely cut them off. I mean, not a good look. Uh, so here's another one. Collect Jurassic was hit with copyright takedown notices on one of his YouTube videos and also had his Instagram account suspended after being reported multiple times for copyright violations. He also said his Twitter account keeps getting locked over copyright. Um, we had that happen to us again, too, with Universal related on Pirates and Princesses one time. I remember it was uh, when we put up images of the Mario... Uh, Mario Kart racetrack mm -hmm. and to, and they were publicly available images, but they actually had that tweet deleted 
And right, but it was publicly available yeah, images. It was, pub- it was they were already released. Yeah. So here's a message from Instagram. Your account has been disabled. You're no longer permitted to use Instagram. Uh, you've agreed to our terms of service. So basically, these social media companies buckle. Well, and they, all of them do. They all buckle immediately. They don't push back. They don't check it. That's because no. they said so. It's it's legit. And that's a problem. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Y'all need to go actually, Teespring, y'all need to go actually investigate this shit. Just because they say it's so, doesn't mean it's so. So here, yeah, Collect Jurassic, they were getting hit. They're like, if I, I disappear, here's what happened. Um, here's a Connor... Dalgarno, host of Best in Slot, said he was hit with a copyright strike on YouTube after looking at a product that's available on the shelf. I got hit. Well, he put by, like a picture of it on the shelf. On the shelf. shelf. I got hit by a copyright strike last night too for looking at a product that's available on the shelves. Mattel on the warpath. What the actual fuck? I'm sorry, Mattel. This whoever your your legal uh, advisors are, you need to fire them. Yeah, I agree. And the thing uh, is, everybody's you like, you're hoping right this now. is going to just be forgotten. It's like, it's not. Because no. now you're messing with the fans. You want the fans' money, but you're going to treat them like this. And it sounds like a lot of these aren't even legitimate claims. Yeah, and again, they were probably hired by Mattel. And to justify their fees, they were mm. like, oh, look look at us. Look at how many of these you know bootleg channels we shut down, Mattel. We're doing a good job. Give us more money. And the reality is, is you're probably costing Mattel money because you're you're attacking the people that are the super fans that buy and promote their products for free. Now, this article says he did not, that Andy's Dinosaur Reviews did not get his channel back, but the other place said it did. This was um, a couple of days ago. So he said Collect it. Jurassic said that they got their Instagram account restored. Um, without getting into the nitty-gritty details of it, the mistake was corrected, and it's back online. The mistake was corrected. Uh-huh. But then they said Collect Jurassic added that the toys in his review were street-dated, but the retailer sent them anyway, which is what I was talking about. Yes. Uh, Walmart has put them out before, too, and I, I've seen them before, but you could not buy them. However, they ended up on eBay and stuff like that, which led to some Twitter users suggesting that the copyright takedown notices may have been filed against these creators in response to an assumed violation of a review embargo. Thing is, you don't know, most people aren't going to know what the review embargo dates are unless they were told what the review embargo dates are. If I see a toy on the shelf, I'm going to assume that since I can purchase said toy, that there is no reason why I can't put it up. So it would be on Mattel's lawyers uh, to be like requesting the takedown, say, hey, there's an embargo on this. Could you please just take your video down until this date and then you can repost it again? And they could totally do that. But they didn't. They instead just deleted an entire channel, tried to delete entire channels over information that they would not know about. So here, a lawyer weighs in. Uh, copyright attorney Leonard French said that violation of a review embargo would require the reviewer exactly. to have assented to the embargo agreement and would be a contract issue, not copyright. Exactly. Basically, basically, the reviewer who purchased it at a store didn't sign any kind of agreement that they weren't going to review or release. You know, like if you get... PR cookies, and a lot of YouTubers get PR cookies. Disney does this. Disney does it. They will give you early access to something, you know, maybe a couple of weeks before it's released, but the reality, you're not allowed to post anything about it. But the cupcake that I accidentally posted about the one time, because I didn't know. Yeah, right. And then I took it down as soon as they told me, because I didn't know I couldn't post it yet until, like, I think it was the next day at, like, a certain, amount, a certain time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you sign that kind of agreement, like, we're letting you into the Willy Wonka chocolate factory, you're not going to steal any fizzy lifting drinks. And you're not going to talk about it until this day at this time. Yeah, that's a different thing. If you sign nothing, if you're like, I went to the store, and they had a dinosaur toy, and I bought it, and I took some pictures of it. They have no, like, to stand on. But what they're doing, I think, is they're actually going around and bullying smaller channels, because the Dinosaur Review channel, I, now I don't know the size of the other ones, but the Dinosaur Review channel is not a massive channel, uh, so it's easy to bully them. And mm. you can go back to Mattel and be like, oh, look, we took these guys down. They were costing you money. How is it costing Mattel money when Mattel is in the business of selling physical Toy products. It's more, I think, because they don't want the IP holder to get pissed. They don't want Universal to get pissed. Yeah. Well, it goes on. Um, he had a fair use would be the applicable analysis. I'm having trouble understanding how a video review of a toy could not be fair use, okay? Yeah. Fair use is a principle in copyright law that allows people to use copyrighted material without permission from the copyright holder. It generally applies to commentary and criticism, and four factors are used to determine whether the use of copyright material is fair use. Mm-hmm. Unboxing videos really shouldn't be able to be taken down under copyright for any reason, French said in a video discussing these copyright takedown notices. 
He said the four principles are used to determine um, fair use, the effect upon the, the potential market, which this would be a, a positive to the potential market, yeah, yeah. argued that there's no usurping the market for the work by showing it. He said that the issuance of these copyright takedown notices may be even rises to the level of interference with economic relations. Using copyright to take down the review videos and possibly even these creators' channels and accounts, that seems to me like it's economic interference of the illegal kind. And if these channels were damaged, and they would have been. if they wanted to pursue a claim, I think they have a claim under California state law because that's where YouTube is located uh, and that's where they're located. That's where Mattel is located. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's pretty egregious and pretty clear in my opinion that Mattel should not be using copyright to take down reviews that were outside of the embargo and the reviewers weren't even a party to the embargo. Now, exactly, that's what I was saying. I would suggest, I mean, again, these are smaller channels, but I would suggest to anyone who makes a livelihood off of YouTube or blogs, whatever, get yourself a copyright attorney. Get yourself a trademark attorney, IP attorney, somebody, a lawyer of some kind. Not mom and pops, uh, you know, ambulance chasing, local lawyer, but get yourself somebody who knows what they're doing when it comes to dealing with, uh, you know, intellectual property. Right. But I want to read this last, this what last paragraph. Going to talk about the people who have had been victims of the takedowns. YouTube recently revealed the impact of false copyright claims in its first ever copyright transparency report. The report noted that 2.2 million videos have been targeted with false copyright claims and that when creators appeal copyright claims, 60% are resolved in the favor of creators. 60% of the 2.2 million videos that are falsely flagged. This is showing you that these law firms are taking full advantage of using these copyright claims, which is what we were saying. Yeah. And they're taking it, they're, they're flagging stuff and claiming copyright, and like, well, it's not even just on YouTube. Like I said, we saw it with Riot Games. They flagged that artist's own artwork because it had the word arcane in it, because their comic had the word arcane, which they do not own the word arcane. Yeah, that was on Teespring. Mm hmm Teespring. So yeah. what's going on here, these, these people are getting paid to go out and flag as much as they can flag. And then under the guise of protecting the copyright they're, that they're hired to protect, but they're just turning around and flagged a bunch of stuff unfairly, causing people harm, and then probably getting paid for it. Yep. Uh, so you want to talk about the damage being done, right? Now, Mattel is actually doing well. Mattel is doing well. Isn't that swell? Well, yeah, they were actually doing pretty good during the pandemic. You know, of course, toy sales are up. And they were in a really bad place a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. right? So they're making a comeback. Uh, people are generally excited about a lot of the new, at least, you know, with um, a lot of the uh, He-Man toys. They're excited about them. Maybe not the cartoons, but the toys are doing well. They seem to be selling, right? Um, Barbie seems to be selling again. You get down to the comments. The only comment, and this is on Deadline. How wonderful for Mattel to make a profit. A lot of the success comes from toy reviewers, such as Andy's Dinosaur Reviews on YouTube, who Mattel has unjustly hit with multiple copyright claims so the fandom is going to turn on you well Mattel. we saw it with star wars uh, yeah. they got rid of gina carano and then every one of their videos they were putting quotes from gina carano in them yeah lord of the rings they they're taking that one quote and every time they put up a video they're turning around and hitting the video with the quote in different languages you know it, it, the fans are showing you what they want and what they don't want and when you're antagonistic towards the fans, um, it's probably not a good thing. Now, I understand that you might have some deals in place with the IP holders so you can't let things, certain things out and things get leaked. It's not your fault. I get that. But the best way to handle that is to talk to people first. A lot of people you'll find, especially if they're legitimate fans of something, and you tell them, here's what happened. Can you not put it up? They're going to, they're going to comply because they're going yeah. to be like, oh, yeah, okay, I see your point. No problem. Most people are going to. And even then, you have to ask yourself, is this something I can really fight anyway? Or am I just doing damage to somebody, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to shut them up? I mean, telling them to take a video down or taking one video down is one thing. To turn around and try to take complete channels down, which they try, like they, they tried to do with our website, that's completely different. Because they're just like, they're trying to just like, they're going way too far. Yeah. Yeah, so Mattel, again, I know you watch us. I know you watch us because we talk about you a lot. You really need to look at who you are hiring to uh, carry out your marching orders because they're doing your brand damage. Also, Mattel, if you're going to do another she show, I highly recommend that you do one based on the old show because you'll actually sell toys. People actually watch the show. And I also want to know where those big dolls were that you showed a couple years ago and at uh, the she He-Man convention, PowerCon, that you never released. I would very much like those. Thank you. Okay. Don't copyright strike our channel.
<laughs> well, we'll fight back. Oh, absolutely. We already have a, a trademark attorney and copyright yeah. lawyer. So. We got we got a guy on speed dial for this sort of thing. So yes. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.